But to go back to your point, I feel like that is the issue with a lot of people my age. And I kind of, with your statements, get a grasp on that now. I think it's people are complacent in their relationships. And I think it takes a unique individual. And we want more of these individuals, but it takes a unique individual to not get complacent in relationships, whether it be personally or with jobs. And people who are just willing to leave a job because they think it's okay or, oh, I'll I'll maybe come back. That's just what they do. They get complacent yeah. and they leave. And I'm cool with leaving jobs. Again, I've left jobs. I just feel like there's a massive disconnect. I don't know if culturally is the, the word to, to use, but I think it is different generations. You okay. Know? Yeah. I think so. so there's just this disconnect between how to do that well. Like I've never had a single employee that I hated, right? That I would wish ill Ill, upon. Like even the bullshit from the summer stuff, right? Like I don't wish ill upon those people. I see it for what it is. You're a broken ass, immature group of people. I can't fix that. I can't fix that. Like I can't, I tried. I can't, I want want you to win. I want you to win. But the thing is, like, I believe that I can win and you can win and you can win and everybody out and there can win. how you win whether is they're focusing on, nothing on those people. Well, right. But they, we can all win whether you're on my team or not. And that's the part where people think I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to hurt him. I, you ain't going to hurt me. Right. Because all I'm focused on. Is me. I want to tear them down. And mine. I want to do that. <laughs> I mean, we, <laughs> right. we, we talked about this the other day. How do people act when they see someone who isn't on their team? I don't know. Fair. It's kind of what happens when people yep. leave a job. It's like, oh, I'm no longer on your team. Yep. Well, here goes everything that I. But it doesn't have think. to be that way. Oh, exactly. Unfortunately, no, it, it does is that way for a lot, a lot of people right now. It is. It is. And it's so unnecessary. It's mm-hmm. so unnecessary. Like, why? Like, I, I really, really believe and understand that the su- success we have, are having, are building towards, are working so hard for, is because of the people that we have. Mm-hmm. We don't, we have a tremendous individual who works for us on the training side who is a tremendous asset, um, support, C- comes to us a couple weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago, doesn't want to do the job anymore. Well, let, let's figure this out. Because this is a talented individual. This is a very loyal individual. Very. This is a person who's extremely capable and talented. And for what they do, is not just a dime a dozen. Like you, it is hard to replace. So are you not happy with what you're doing anymore because of how it's, how we're doing it? Are there changes that we can make to make it to where you actually do enjoy what you're special at? Or are we just not passionate about that, those tasks anymore? Right. Which And, and our conversations fine. were, we're fine with any of those answers. Right. But what you do is special. Let's talk about it. Like let's right. and that's what I think the biggest point of all this is is she came to us and she had a conversation. Yeah. And wanted to have open dialogue, respected us, we respected her, and we talked about it. And then we sat on it for a month. Right. Because she didn't want to go anywhere. She didn't want to No. She got bills to pay. Like <laughs> she's right. yeah. and what and what ultimately is gonna happen? She's going to do better and thrive. She's gonna be set up for more success. We're removing Pain we got points. wind of something like we caught wind of something that we didn't even because I, I mean, uh, all 
other small business owners out there or anybody who manages people, it's really difficult to see the nitty gritty when you're constantly thinking big picture. Yes. And so because she came to us to have this conversation, we got to really get more in depth of, okay, what's actually happening? Like, what is this workload actually? What, what are these maybe negatives that are derailing you from what we are expecting of you and want you to be doing with your job? We found out so many things. We're like, what? No, we don't want that yeah. happening. Like you, you know, don't need our, to be doing that. In our conversation, Jonathan, in in these um, additional meetings that came of that initial conversation, are me saying, "You know what? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I. This is on me. I thought, from my standpoint, we were staffed ahead. We were we were prepared for the growth that we experienced, and we were ahead a little bit. And the reality is. We were behind, but it took, it took, um, an adult, a young adult Mm -hmm. being mature, being courageous and saying, Hey, look, this is where I'm at. I want to be here. I love the team. I love that. What we do. And she loved her job. Loves my, I love my job. I just know for me, my heart, my mind if this is how her it continues. mental health is actually what she said, which yep. I also think is a really good point yeah. to say because she can recognize what is so important. Mental health is so important that I feel like we're just now on the brink of t- like, it's okay to talk about it. Yep. But at the flip side to that is it's also a heavily hindered excuse for a lot of people. Right. Yes. And she was, she came to us in genuine honesty of, I need to protect my mental health. And when you know, somebody says that to you, you listen. You listen and you accept. Well, well, yeah, and it's fine, right? One one point I feel like we also need to make, going back to your point, Katie, it's like with those jobs that are giving you $15, $16 an hour, $1,000 sign-on bonus, like guess what? That McFlurry gets made the same way every time. There is no no flexibility. (laughs) I'm not going to ask you how you're feeling that day. Right, you're right. Vanilla. Oreo sprinkles. Ugh. Exactly. So it's like <laughs> vanilla Oreo sprinkles. You have a, you come in with a bad day and your mental health might be struggling. You're not vanilla Oreo sprinkles. Sprink- yeah. Ugh. Exactly. And you go back. You you just go back and look at it, and there are different intangibles that I feel like people in my age range don't necessarily look at. Like, hey, this could be a stepping stone to your passion. Hey, these people, if you're really, if you really need help, they might look out for you. Like there's little things that people don't really consider because really all they see is that hourly rate. Yeah. And, and money is an important thing, but money is only money. Right. I don't think, Ed, well, I, I don't think I know this for a fact for this particular individual. All right. There's no amount of money that I could have offered her compensation, bonuses, incentives. There's zero of that. That would have kept her doing that role as it sat. She, I mean, However, when she came to us, I feel like she knew and she kind of alluded to it was, it's okay that I'll take a pay cut. Yeah. This poor thing. Look, and I love this individual. I'm not going to throw her name out on here, but like I, I we both do. Um, and she's been with us for several years. She's a tremendous asset to our organization. Um, <laughs> but this poor thing, she says, Josh. I think I want to be your assistant. <laughs> <laughs> and our response yeah. right now is our response. response I, then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I laughed and I said, no. The funny I, thing I, is I, I actually made a rule. No more assistants yeah, for Josh. I, yeah. I mean, I really legitimately probably think I need to never have an assistant. I think I'm probably, I'm probably in the top 5% of people who could use one. Yeah, literally. But I've broken so one. many. I feel like I've broken so many people in relationships because of it. And she probably would have um, been a really as good of a fit organ like who we have in our organization 100%. as we could have. Yes. Uh uh-uh. uh. She's too good. But here's the thing though. But, <laughs> but she's too good to to risk it because my thing is like your skill set is so unique and so special. How do we harness that so that you can have more success? All right, personally professionally, financially, the company wins. If you're winning in all three of those areas, the company wins big time. And so, okay, I need to hire help done. I need to, and a lot of things unfolded for you to see these types of things. It wasn't like you're kind of catering to 
her, they're not complaints, her, her struggles. That's a better, like with the job. So it's like none of that. And that, that's another really good point. I feel like needs to be said right now is people, our generation looking at Jonathan and saying this is, you know, young twenties, late twenties. My boss doesn't care. My job doesn't care about me. You know, they just want me to come in and do my job. They want me to come in and make that McFlurry. And yeah, a lot of places that's accurate. But find the places that that's not accurate. And it's because you do the work, because yeah. you do your part. I guarantee you, no matter where you go, if you do your part, your boss will do theirs. And if they don't, then that's when you know that is not a good fit. Yeah. But she does her part more than her part. And she came to us very genuinely. And that's when it yeah. took a month of kind of sitting on it and figuring sure. it out. And because it was a, very weighted like, like at least five options are on the table yeah, kind of what we were talking deal. through and i feel like we came to at least for now a really and she i mean and she even said that to us today we we actually just had a meeting before this kind of laying it out and her response was thank you thank you thanks for listening to me yeah my Tom- like, oh my bad it, you're good go ahead yeah, my tomlin has a really good quote we need volunteers not hostages people who are volunteering to go do stealers work. yeah oh, shit. not people <laughs> not people who are just kind of sitting there stuck in the role you know so side note since you have that trash sweatshirt on and you're a Steelers <laughs> fan also katie in this in this room friday or sa- this weekend my fantasy league um i have the bucks defense all right well it's a bye week so i put them off nobody had the steelers defense of course. So I picked them up off of They're not the, steel the deal they once were. because they're playing some garbage trash team this past weekend. I'm like, hey, you know what? They'll get me some solid points. No reason for concern. Even though they dropped some negatives in fantasy this year, no reason for real concern. Y'all are up like 21-0. Mm-hmm. And I think you barely pulled it out. I've told you this so many times. This I, is how the Steelers play football. No, man. I don't understand how y'all do. You know what? Let me apologize. I'm a Notre Dame fan. I understand exactly how you That's guys about to do say. it. So. You, should, you should definitely understand working real hard towards a goal, like I, the college football you playoff. Need to, <laughs> you need to peak at the right time. You can't start out strong because then you, you you don't necessarily finish strong, right? Uh, Notre Dame doesn't do that. No. You got to build. That. Not at all. There. We there's, don't do that. There's levels to it. So, look, guys, here's here's the deal, I think. Whether you are a business owner, whether you are a manager, whether you are a mid, mid, mid-level mid employee, whether you are an entry-level employee. Communication is super important. And as an employee, as a mid-level manager, st- communication coming down from the top, whatever, and even as a business owner and communication coming to you from the people that you count on to, to run your businesses, um, Communication is key, and it doesn't mean that it's going to be everything that you want to hear. Yeah. We hear some pretty hurtful things daily from staff. It's hurtful at the end of the day because we're, we're trying to process, damn, how'd they get to the part where they feel that way? Because for me, I feel a bit of failure and tension. In the moment, I may not. In the min- in the moment, I might be like, well, F them. They can freaking drive off a bridge. But you do every you single know? time. I feel like we have a follow-up, and, you're, and you come back to, you know, I thought about it. Did I, what did I do in this scenario? What, what is my responsibility? Because I, whether it's the dog training, whether it is the, the board and daycare, whether it was <laughs> real estate business years ago, Everything, good or bad, ultimately is is mine to own. That's me. And that, yes, you count on management. You count on people to do the right thing. Of course you do. But I own 100% of, of every action, every detail, every responsibility. Ultimately, it is mine. And if you have businesses out there and you're listening to this and you don't operate with that mentality, you need to wrap it up, homie. Because... <laughs> Your people will never get on board and go fight for you if they don't believe that you're all in with it. I can have staff disagree with me. I can have staff be upset with accountability. I can have staff um, you know, question some decisions. But I don't, for me, I would never be okay. 
I don't think any of my staff would say that I'm not all in on what we do, that I'm not passionate about what we do, that I am not steady on what we're about. If we ask any random employee of ours across the businesses who walks through this door right now, number one thing we care about, what are they going to say, Katie? Easily. Health and safety of a dog, no matter what. That's it. So social media, other businesses, other training companies, other whatever, they can say whatever they want about me and us. But the reality is, and what our clients experience, and what the dogs entrusted to us experience, no matter where, what business they fall under, is what, Katie? Health and safety, number one priority. That's it. And I think that is a really good point to say, too, is no matter what venture you want to go into next, what, well, no matter what venture you're, you've had in the past, one of the biggest reasons why you wanted to shut down Bay Rivers is because did it protect health and safety of a dog, first and foremost, no matter what? Yes, it did while mm-hmm. we had those dogs in our care, it did. but long term was that ultimately reaching that goal or could it reach that goal? We believed it couldn't Correct. because of a few things, staffing, keeping up with staffing, relying on that entry level staff to care yeah. for your dogs. And you guys come to off leash canine training. You have the best of the best dog trainers in our area. Yep. Hands down. They go through a, a vigorous training process. Like you have the best of the best. But to run a boarding and daycare business, it's a, just a different ball game. And ultimately, it, to, it wasn't worth that risk of we would never risk a health and safety of a dog yeah. because which pairs to a client's family member in our care. They trust us with it. Sure. And we don't take that lightly, whether they're here for a private lesson, a board and train, staying with us for boarding or daycare. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Their family member is now our family member. And we don't take that lightly. And I think you just kind of realized, which it took me, you know, a night of a steak and wine and a little bit of tears. I I set you up with a good wine. (laughs) That's true. When you told me that you want, you had gotten to this decision, I very quickly knew there was no, I can convince him to change some things, Yes. but I very quickly knew there was no convincing him to change the decision he made to shut down Bay Rivers. And it, while I was upset about it, I worked really hard in it. You did. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into it. I knew 100% it was the right thing to do because of our mission is to provide this exceptional experience that no, what I believe in our area, no other dog trainer, no other boarding and daycare provides. There's a lot of really great ones. There are. But there's not what I believe to be the most exceptional that we provide. And ultimately, I was on board with that because yeah. I agreed with staffing, with kind of what we let out here and yeah. just with you know, business and small business ownership and paying and work hard and do all these things and do it right and do it well. It's a really difficult place to navigate Yeah, when you need staff at big numbers to navigate that. Well, no, you do. I mean, in 12 months, we grew to the largest boarding and daycare on the peninsula, yep. one of the largest in Hampton Roads in 12 months Yep, in the middle of a pandemic. Over, over a thousand client base in our, in Insane. our system. Which is crazy. Yes, through Insane. a pandemic in that small, and I would say a very small percentage, which is going to happen no matter what. In any business that you do, when you work with clients, when you work with animals, there's going to be a small percentage where you might have, you know, made a mistake. You might have sure, not given 100%. them the report yeah. card that they needed or wanted or, yeah. you know, that's that's customer service. It's going to happen. But the thing that is so impressive to me that I would never want to get lost through the mix of all the shuffle and shutting down and all the things is the 90%, if not more clients that we had, that we worked with on day to day, like, no, they, they could tell you they cared about my dog health and safety first. They even know our first priority and they would tell you that. And they were so thrilled. I mean, the amount of tears that were shed in our lobby on the biggest day of that we've ever had at Bay Rivers, when we (laughs) shut it down, the biggest day of all of that, the amount of tears that were shed of, I'm so sad you guys are going. Yep. Some clients, most clients are like, I get it. Yep. Some clients were like, I get it, but I hate you for it. Like, no, stay open, 100%. please. And the amount yep. of clients that begged us to do something. Hell, we even had a client like, hey, I had an inheritance. What can I do? To- <laughs> yeah. Josh, if it's a money thing, <laughs> we're like, we'll, no, 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 it's we'll not. We'll invest. That. <laughs> I can get some of the other owners. We'll come volunteer and we'll be in the yards. And, and on it, here's the thing, guys. Like, I appreciated that so much. Yes. Like that made me, cause this was a hard decision and 
12 years ago, 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I don't make the decision. My pride doesn't allow me to make the decision. Um, it's like, ah, uh, people are going to think certain things. Some people who, before we made the decision, you know, we're trying to stir up some trouble are going to think that it's a win for them. I can't give them that, you know, or people are going to think financially we're struggling or people are going to think, Oh, some things that were said were accurate or people are going to think I 12 years ago, 10 years ago, Bay river still exists today. I don't give a shit. I don't. I talked to my wife extensively about it. I talked to my kids about it. Because I need them to be okay. I talked to you about it, Katie. Once I made the decision, I had to be very set in my decision before it was going to be a conversation. <laughs> and when I got set in my decision, we I had a conversation. Sometimes. You can be. <laughs> and and but I appreciate that about you. But you're also that individual within our organization. You know the weight that you carry. You know what your opinion me, me, means to me. Um, I am going to give it weight, but this decision was for me to make mm -hmm. and nobody else. And I knew I couldn't communicate it until I had made it. It wasn't a, Hey, I'm thinking about. Mm -mm. And I think this the good thing is you didn't make it for anybody else. You made it for you. I made it for me. I made it because for my your family. name was all over that. hundred percent. And it didn't matter if it was called Bay rivers, if Correct. it was called whatever it, it, it was a business of Josh Wilson's. And what does that mean? Yep. It means so many things. And we all, and we've talked about it a ton, health and safety, and but also exceptional client experience, exceptional dog experience. We yep. take care of our staff. It is not about money at all. Like nope. how much money did you refund to give back? And even, even people that didn't even pay for packages, we gifted them packages and you still gave them that value back. It, yeah. And, and a lot of people could easily say about you, about any small business owner, any big business owner, it's just about money, but it's couldn't, it couldn't be further from the truth. Cause they don't actually know yeah. it had nothing to do with money. In fact, it hurt. Like I lost my ass. You literally <laughs> lost thousands of dollars in doing this, Tens of thousands but what you're going to gain years to come is what's better. Yeah. Dogs are going to be better cared for. hundred percent. And the, the, the turnover of the staff, the staff, the fluctuating piece as we grew. When we were 20 dogs a day, fluctuating staff was no big deal. No big deal. No big deal at you could all. You train and the new one so well. Yeah. You could. But when we were averaging 80, 90 dogs a day, because the market wanted what we were providing. If we were out here abusing dogs, treating dogs poorly and all of these things. We wouldn't have who, had that. Who growth. the hell's showing up? Like, right. Nobody. Because our community, I don't know, wherever you're listening, there might be different types of areas. Our community is small not this town. huge deal. This is a small town. And um, it's. It, Shout out to York County 411 it, Facebook yeah, page. Hey, and, York County 411. Right. I would like to see my name less in there. Uh, <laughs> but it's. And we've been here for a while. We've been involved in businesses and supporting organizations. And like. We, I, I like to be low key. I prefer to be low key. We are known in Hampton Roads. Our business is known. I like my business to be known. I don't like to be known. Right. I want my trainers to be known. I don't need to be known. When we decided to shut this thing down, and if you own a business, I want you listening right now. Just because it makes money doesn't mean it's worth it. There's a difference between making money and being profitable. And just because it's profitable doesn't mean it's worth it. Now, had this been our sole means of income, if if the board and daycare was solely how I took care of my family and how Katie got compensated and all those things, we would probably still be doing Bay Ridge board be, and daycare. Be, it would be so. It but would, it would be a different yes. setup. However, it's not. Bay Rivers was part of a larger organization that we've worked very hard to build. And the amount of time it took to what it provided wasn't in alignment. So we made the decision to go away. Did it make money? Sure, it made money. Did it make enough money? No. <laughs> and yeah. enough money is, is you know, that's relative. Like, what's, mm -hmm. what's enough money? It, it, the, staff always got paid. We could pay the bills. We did. Dogs, we could do dog, the fun events. We could do the like fun that. events, yeah. you know, and all those things. And so... However, I still come back to 
if it was that at that number of dogs and that type of revolving door, and I don't believe it was a revolving door, were there some management issues? A hundred percent. Did they need to get stronger and better? A hundred percent. I do not think though that revolving door of that entry level role there would have changed right now in this climate. I think three years ago, had we done Bay Rivers? So different. Very different. And I pray and I hope that three years from now, it is very different. Mm -hmm. Um, And our story with Bay Rivers, with the staffing issues, is not different from any other industry right now. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to come on here and talk about it is because, like, guys, like, you're not alone in this. Ladies, you're not alone in this with your businesses. So many people are dealing with this right now. Um, And in certain circumstances, if people try to come at you, don't fold. If you're a piece of shit and the things they're saying about you are accurate and coming to light, fold. Because you're a piece of shit. But if you know what you do and what you're about and how you train and how you support and how you execute and how you hold accountable and your mission and your vision is clear and it's right, just because someone or a group of people or certain things and it starts to get ugly and stuff, don't fold because of that. Well, and I think like, hold, I think hold your own. A big point too to that is, yeah, hold your own. Like because you did stay true to who you are, you did what what people could say about you, and any small business owner for that matter, especially when you're providing a service, because that's yes. the most difficult small business in my opinion. And um, you're you're gonna catch that, but stay true to who you are and what your mission is and what your core values are. And honestly the most disappointing thing of it all. And maybe even disappointing isn't the right word. It's just the craziest thing to me is the, the people who say those things were the people that were doing those things. Mm -hmm. They worked there every single day. They, I had like things I saw online or things I saw, you know, have heard through whatever, because people are people. They're all flawed. Um, They were the ones doing those things and they, they were the ones okay with it until, until what they were let go. They didn't have a job. They were okay with it until their friend was I, it, like, it's just, it's so crazy to me. It's like, you don't have a, a voice on what you think is right or wrong until something you feel is wrong to you. Right. And then you want to make it a thing and you mm-hmm. want to put a snippet of the reality up there and things like that. Yeah. And I feel like this last year, especially I've learned a lot about, you know, and I don't know, this is probably fine. It's fine. Josh and I and John, we all share, we're all Christians. We all believe in God. Like mm-hmm. we all believe you don't do good to get into heaven. No, you, right. you, you're yeah. great. Like you, we accept Jesus in, into our heart and, and that is how you get in heaven. However, I believe after this year, especially you do good. Cause it's just the right thing to do. Right. And even when it's hard, even when money doesn't align with it, like you do the right thing because it's the right thing. And yes. those two things get so misconstrued, but they're so perfectly paired together. It's not karma. It's not this, that, or the other that millennials will want to go and say, it's just do the right thing. Even when it's hard, even when I have to pay for it, whether it's emotionally, physically, financially, yeah. do the right thing, even when it's hard. And that's what I think is people just miss out on so much is they don't want to do the right thing. No, they want to take the easy route. And I think you so perfectly put a perfect example out there for all of us is do the right thing. Even when it's hard, it was not easy to shut down Bay rivers. It was very, very hard emotionally, physically, financially. It was so hard. We disappointed so many people, clients, staff, so many people. And while I pride you in providing opportunity for all the staff included that were still with us on that day, they all got a new job. It was so hard. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to me when we open. <laughs> I laugh about it so much now. When we opened up Bay Rivers, we're like we're joking on our first podcast. Man, we open up a boarding and daycare business in the middle of a pandemic when it's a travel ban and you know people working from home. They don't need us, but here they are. They want us. Yep. We have a hundred dogs. They want us. That wasn't the issue. That wasn't the struggle we thought it was. Then what it was is the aftermath of all of that. Mm-hmm. The climate control of or the the climate the current climate of staffing yeah. of 
workers who are willing to work hard, who don't expect, but are willing to put in the work for it mm -hmm. and the ratios of what we need to have and what it actually takes to run that type of business. We thought opening a daycare and boarding in the middle of a pandemic was hard. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. And the thing that's so funny is all of the success that it had and the accolades and the, the, the desire, I do think I'm a confident person. All right. I don't think anybody question I'm a little bit of ego and I'm confident, but that decision to say, we're not going to do this anymore. I'm proud of myself for that decision. I'm not proud of myself for a lot of things. I'm proud of myself for that thing. Most people wouldn't have made and, that decision. And, and I, I feel like people get so hung up on that. And the second I made the decision, it felt so good. It felt so freeing because we could make strategic decisions to get more honed in on what we do, how we do it, what's most important for our business. Experience that we yeah, provide. It, it is. Who and it, you provide it, it is for. health and well being of the many, dogs is number one, but a very close number two is our staff. That's what I'm how many staff are we employing right now? Literally. Yeah, like, and anybody who wanted a job. When we shut down Bay Rivers, had a job. Had one. You employ every single one of those people Everybody. had opportunity. And right now we're what? With the amount of trainers we count out at dinner last night between admin staff that we have, we're 85. It's something stupid. Like that's it's a crazy. lot of people that you feel the burden of caring for, of providing for, of making sure that they have opportunity and stability. Yeah. And that decision you made to shut down Bay Rivers had a massive impact on who you were Providing opportunity for. Sure. I mean, it impacts everybody and it impacted clients, it impacted staff, it impacted so many. Um, you know, but as a business owner, you have to factor all those things in, but you cannot continue to go down a path that is not in alignment with the mission just because of who's depending upon it. Well, I think you do. You, you have know? to go in line with, with what is in the mission because of who's depending on it. Well, right. But you have to get clear on who yes. and what actually matters. Like, is it the clients who depend on it? It's not. No. I want to provide this service to the clients. That's why we did it. Did I just believe we could provide it better than others in the area? I did and do. However, it did not fit into the organization. It did not fit into our overarching mission and what we needed to accomplish. And that's why another thing I think is really great for business owners to hear is you have to determine what that is. You have to determine what your overarching mission and yep. core values and why you came into business to begin with. Because if you don't know that, then you don't have, you don't make a, a split, that's not a split second decision, but a very quick decision happened over one weekend. It did. Um, a decision to shut down a business you don't make that decision that quickly without knowing very clearly what your overlying mission is for sure. And, and then instantly feel okay with it. Yep. And, and great, great point, Katie. And that is a lesson to take away from this guys. If you do have your own businesses or you are in the process of, of launching a business and something you're excited about and passionate about an idea you have, you need to know what that mission is. You need to know what, the values are that you're, your you're about and, and know your why, because my, but before you can figure that out for your organization, you have to figure that out for you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what your values are, it is impossible to, to come up with and convey the values of your business to your team. Cause they cannot be different. They have to be the same. Cause if I tell you these core values of my business are X, Y, and Z, but all you see in my personal life is A, B, and C. Guess who's going to have a problem? Our staff. Yeah, it's not in alignment. Yeah, and I mean, just as a message to all the people, like just employees in general, how can you expect to have a standard for what you should be paid if you don't have a standard on how to act like within a business at a job? Like Bay Rivers closed because the standard might not have been met from a staffing standpoint, mm -hmm. but the whole business didn't shut down because our standard ultimately is good people good dogs yeah. doing the right doing thing, the right thing right. Yeah. safety. Yeah. So it's like, if you have that standard, it makes things so much easier. You can stay and or elevate in jobs as an employee if you have that standard. But if you just yeah. have a standard for what you deserve and not what you should give out, it makes yeah. things a whole lot more difficult. And for I will say too, it's good to know 
all the people that worked for Bay Rivers that you offered opportunity to, the people who were open minded and heard you and your reasoning and why were very, a lot of them were very hesitant to move forward and very saddened to move forward. Sure. I would say majority of them are so thrilled with what they're doing now. Like, yeah, we found so many great dog trainers that didn't even know they wanted to be a dog right. trainer. <laughs> they- like, Hey guys, we've seen things from you over the last couple of months. We'd like to take you through our certification process, teach you how to do what we do. And let's see and if there's to the point where they were like, no, nah, I don't think that's for me. And we're like, okay, give it a chance. Though. Yeah. Give it a shot. And they're crushing it. Like Doing literally great. crushing it. They Doing had no, great. they had no idea. Yeah. And then being a dog trainer opens up a world of opportunity that they didn't even know yeah. was in their next steps. It's cool. And for me, that's been a big thing. Um, like I never say never. I don't know that Bay Rivers probably doesn't ever come back. Um, but I don't know that I'm out of the daycare business forever. I think daycare is amazing. I think daycare done right, um, provides an, uh, a very much needed Needed. service. Um, based on what I'm hearing from previous clients, a lot of previous clients, (laughs) uh, there is a need for daycare done right. And that's not a, Hey, look, if you're listening and you're here local and you have a boarding and daycare business and you're like, what the hell are you talking about, Josh? I'm probably talking about your ass because I'm getting stuff back from my clients. I ain't gonna put your name out here, but tighten up, pay attention to your staff, pay attention to what they're doing. Your dog care about the dogs rather than the money. Okay. Be about that. Because that's an important. So if you feel like I'm talking about you, I am talking about you. I'm just a gentleman. I'm not going to put your name out here. Okay. I want to. But it's important because again, it what's it fall deal. back to? It's not just you're not just a, a small business. Dogs. You're a family, a family member is in your care. Right. And there are great ones out there for sure. And if it wasn't for and, and I'll come back to this and be and be super, super clear. If it was not for the constant turnover, we outgrew. Mm-hmm. We outgrew the current Quickly. employment climate. And it was impossible for us to execute at the level that we expected with always having new people because this is not an easy job. It is not an easy career path and we expect more than most places. And so the constant revolving door of new people, because you know, unemployment is kicking off more than than we pay. Sorry. Like this is what we can pay, right? you know, or, you know, McDonald's at 15 bucks an hour or whatever it may be. And that's the funny thing. McDonald's is backed by McDonald's. That's a, that's a right. massive brand. Like, hell, some months I feel like I need to go fill out the application. I like the 15 bucks an hour. And I mean, people like to bring up, what was it, Chipotle, the first place that started doing $15 an hour. Guess who Chipotle is owned by? Same company that owns McDonald's. Oh, is it really? Yes. That's why there? you always see them together. Oh. Guess who Bay Rivers is owned by? The same guy who owns Off Leash. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're different. We ain't the same. Right. It's just like, so it, different. And, and that's another different. thing, too, is John, J. My, like, our our people, we don't like our age. We don't, they don't understand that. They don't no. know what it takes to run a small business. You also they can't see, argue with anyone. They it? couldn't even tell you the difference between profit, revenue, costs. Like they, and, and I'll just say it like, yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Moses. Um, our, they don't learn it in high school and they don't learn it in college unless they go the business route. Like, so it's to, to their fault kind of, but also not to their fault is, you don't learn it unless you put yourself out there to learn it. And it's very sad. And much respect to some of our staff at, at Bay rivers. When we were doing this transition, um, there were a handful of them were like, you know what? We'll just buy it from Josh. (laughs) We'll do this on our own. We'll do it in the building. We'll rebrand it. We can do it. How much could it possibly cost? I was like, well, specifically a gajillion dollars, (laughs) you know? And so, and and I love that passion. Yeah. I love that excitement. I love the in the intention of the statements. And but one couple hours, one night of Googling will quickly you'll realize you ain't got it like that. Most people would have folded when they went out back and saw what was out there when we first got to the <laughs> Oh hell yeah. You gotta be ignorant. A little crazy. There was poop at the facility and way ha- before we became a dog <laughs> facility. I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> literally though <laughs> literally uh, that was i mean it was it was a mess and sure the it, the upfront chunk to get that going was substantial but the ongoing operating cost of that place um are so high and now what is it though it's a beautiful training facility yeah it's a great uh boarding facility for you know 10 dogs it, and the funny thing tremendous. is we still service easily 60 to 100 people a week just like we did with the daycare yeah. but we're doing it with training where where were we doing that before in like random hubbub spots yeah. like we were looking for a third like little room on yeah. up the street just to do lessons. I'm about and, like, to take this busted ass building on Route 17. Literally, I so space crazy. For trainers. And we're so we're e easily servicing the same amount of people, just yeah. in a totally different manner. But it's so much better, and it's so much yeah. more in alignment with who we are and what we're offering, and what actually provides the 85 plus salaries, staff, whatever you yeah. like that we have to be in alignment with our mission and yeah. what we want to do. And I don't. I never feel your salary, your compensation, our trainers. Like I never look at that as a burden. I look at it as an opportunity. I look at it as a blessing. I look at it as, wow, eight years ago, we started this training thing in the backyard and I thought I'd train a dog or two a month. And now we put food on 80 plus tables every night. We're feeding, multiply that by an average two and a half, you know, 200 plus dinners a night. That's a, ble I feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to do that. I feel like you should feel very fortunate that we have the opportunity to do that. It's, that's the focus though. What allows us to do that in the best way? What allows us to be able to do that? Not just today, but five years from now, what decision do we have to make today as a business to make sure that those 200 plus meals are not just eating today on Thursday, but they're eating a thousand Thursdays from now. Those are the decisions we make on a daily basis as business owners and operators. If those aren't the types of decisions that you're making daily, you're not making the right ones. If you're not making the decisions that play into what your business is really about and you're just making reactionary in the moment, short-term decisions every day, you will never get ahead. You will never have stability. You will always be chasing. You will always be dependent upon the mood of the market and the comments of people. But if you're long-term and you're big picture focused, and you're making those micro decisions that, that support those big picture items and are focused on the right things, you can weather the bullshit. And it's not even weathering the bullshit. It's like, well, that was pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, literally, it's like a little annoyance. You like, that was, it's like, that was pretty, eh. that was pretty frustrating. Yeah. It's a shame they feel that way. Next. Yeah, literally. You know, and, and you don't have to run and hide and fold and do those things. Focus on what got you here in the first place and don't be scared to make difficult decisions when it's necessary. What all this crap of the summer really brought about was it allowed enough time to hit pause and take a look at where we were really at. And the reality was, and I've already said this earlier, where we were at was in over a year, just over a year, we built the largest board and daycare on the peninsula one of the top in all of Hampton Roads. I'm extremely proud of that fact. I love it. We have clients coming from all over the place. We had incredible social media engagement. We and people sharing move away and, and still travel to us. Yes, board their they'd dog. move hours and hours away and they got to travel. They're driving to Yorktown, Virginia so that we can, and that's not one person, that's multiple, multiple people. Yeah. Like that's the type of environment that we built. However, doesn't mean it's the best for the organization. It doesn't mean it's the fit. And when you start making decisions for dollars over mission, you're doomed. We don't do that. We don't do that. We're always focused on what we're about and what will come will come. And we stay true to that. 
And, you know, to business owners out there listening, you have to do that. Don't get yourself in a situation. Because, I mean, we, we gave up tens of thousands of dollars a month in revenue mm-hmm. by shutting those doors down. Who? <laughs> I don't hate money. <laughs> right? Like, but I also but think it too, didn't what you, fit. What it you said before, fit. too, it, yeah, don't do it because of if it's not in alignment, but also don't listen to the people who don't matter. Everybody else. Like, have your core people that matter. Yep. And, ha- and have a big core people that matter. I, th- I think there's, I think there's a tremendous value in having your very small, small core people that matter yep. and listen to them. But I also think there's a big value in having a bigger core group that matter a little less. Cause obviously, you know, the ones who are super right. close will be those that brutally honest kind of people. And fuck everybody else. Don't listen to anybody. <laughs> like, no, I mean, it, it is very true. And there's like, a lot of power in that statement. I did learn this because I've got a lot of people around me yeah. all the time. But the last several months have very much proven that small group. Who's really that small group? I have my core group. Mm-hmm. And it's a very small group. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is small. Group. And that's so, and, and but what, the group small to you might people, be bigger to somebody else. I just think it's, it's not, it's very small. But that's fair. <laughs> but I think identifying who, sure. who is for are, you no matter what. No matter what. And even if it's not no matter what, you identify who's for you, but maybe not no matter what, and there's right. still value to that. Yes. But you know, you have identified who those people are, and you stay true to who you are, and you push forward. Yeah. And then all the people that are against you, like you should have know they're against you, doesn't matter. Because you have what you need. You have your mission. Yep. You have your why. You have your core. Nothing else matters. Yeah, it's really funny. And, and we'll start to wrap this up, but... You know, that that group of people that were there and supportive and reached out, hey, are you doing okay? What's going on? My man, Jonathan, comes in the office. He's like, just talk to me. What's up? What do you need? We were in the office you for know? like an hour and a half. Yeah, that day. I mean, and it was, it was nothing beyond a friend checking on me. Mm-hmm. Are you okay? You don't have to talk about anything, but, but you good. Yeah, are you good? Can I get you a Whopper? And then it was just, <laughs> let me let me talk. And I don't have to worry about filters. I don't have to worry about anything. And it's like, hey, I got you. Anything you need, you let me know. And that was it. It was nothing heavy. It was nothing crazy. But there were people that reached out during that time. And there's people that didn't. And that's okay. When tough things are going on, you don't always know if it's appropriate to reach out. You know, Ma, sorry, but I'm going to give this as an example. Two two days ago, would have been Mom and Steve's 30th anniversary. Okay. Um, Steve passed away several years ago. They were separated, you know, during that time. And my mother dropped a very interesting perspective to me yesterday when we were actually in the office talking. Um, she had texted one of her friends. She goes, I'm in a really, it's like, I'm a weird spot. Like we weren't divorced, but I'm not a widow. We were separated. We were in this weird place. We were figuring stuff out. And it's like all those years just went away. They were married 24 years when they got separated. And she's like, it's just kind of like gone. And on Tuesday, I thought to text my mom. She said, it's crazy. This would have been 30 years. You and Steve married. But I didn't because I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to cause any type of thing. Not between me and my mom, but I just didn't want to stir up any emotions in case she wasn't thinking about it. Right. But yesterday, her and I had a great conversation, and she very much was thinking about it. And I should have texted her and just said, man, you and Steve had a lot of great years. Think you, about the good times. Can you believe this would have been 30? Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't do that. And I think in the future in situations like that, I probably will take the moment to send the text or share the thought. Because I think there is a lot of value in knowing that, yes, this person's gone or yes, this is different. But they're still thought about. That's what you thought about. Them. They're still recognized, right. you know, and, and so I was a little bummed to myself in that moment. But you do find out, you know, kind of who's who's for you and who's without you. And I think people do avoid saying things because they don't want to cause more stress or frustration, you know, or concern. Um, but you do very much in difficult times find out who's really for you and, and, and who's not. Um I am so incredibly thankful for my core 
Mm-hmm. I'm so incredibly thankful for that outer circle. Small group. That is still small. Um, and those who depend on the masses for that validation and support, you will never feel whole. Because if you're depending on the masses for validation and support, that means you're also open and vulnerable to the masses for criticism and chaos. When I think you said two really important words here, you said thankful and you said depending thankful. Yes. You can be thankful even for a bigger, you're thankful for all the clients I am. that came through those doors and said, 100%. Josh, for whatever reason, you're shutting it down. I hate it, but I get it. And that, and I appreciate all you did for my dog. I appreciate all this, the staff here, everything mm-hmm. you're thankful for those people. But if you were dependent on those people, you would still be open. Yeah. So it's a big Katie. difference uh, between good. you're dependent on your core, very, very, very small core. You're dependent, maybe, maybe dependent. I think every person's different. You're dependent maybe on that other bit of like the small group. Maybe it's a mix of the both, but then you're just thankful to those who are the bigger group that don't really have any influence into your life, except for you're thankful for them and the support they gave you. And that's where I think we why I love where we landed with shining on the business, because that's where we ended. We were so thankful that we had what we had. And a lot of people don't get to end their business on that good note. We ended, we yeah. finished so strong. It was like, awesome. It was did. the best party ever. We had the hot dog food truck. Oh my gosh. Atomic we, dog. We shout out. You were there amazing. That we never had before. And How many so dogs awesome. did we have? 107? 106, I think it was. 106 dogs on our last day at Bay Rivers. Vegas day. We had... Two dozen volunteers, uh, sailors from the U.S. Yeah. Navy, you know, volunteering their time all day. Out of nowhere just to have extra Everybody hands from off leash. relationships Every there, staffer yeah. at Bay Rivers. I mean, I think we were running like three dogs to one person. We had so many people. Mom was in a room. Yeah, literally. The kids were in a room. <laughs> Devin was on site. Yeah. Like, it was such a, such fun, a fun day. day. And there were so many tears and there was so much excitement just in the day but there were so many tears and there was Josh, thank you. And Katie, thank you. And, and love for the team and our, and our team at Bay Rivers were, were so emotional because they love these dogs so much. My dog so is much. jumping out the window right. as we pull the Holy parking shit. lot. And- we, Jonathan, I don't know if I ever told you this, bro. We, I'm sitting there the yeah. day of last day, an SUV pulls into the parking lot. A Rottweiler jumps out the window of the back seat. I'm like, this is how I end up on the news. <laughs> literally. This is how it ends, literally. And he was so excited. The, he to was get here. fired up. He's like, oh shit, it's Bay Rivers. He jumps out the window to run inside. Sounds like a place that beats the hell out of him every day he shows up, right? I was like, it sounds like I thought that was Rocky that you were No, it wasn't about. Rocky. It Rocky was a, wasn't allowed it was to come a to super <laughs> cute little <laughs> yeah. Roddy. So Roddy puppy, with his long tail. It was yeah. a puppy. It was a puppy. She was wild as hell. So wild. But anyway, like, but but the point of it all is we ended strong. We could have easily just dwindled numbers yeah. and closed out and and help closed out silently. We could have closed out silently. Just disappeared overnight. Right. We didn't. We made it such a big thing. We're so proud of everything that we did yeah. in this small community. Let's go out with a bang and let's make sure that, you know, we as much as we expect from others, we also do the same thing. Yeah. We also finish strong. Yeah. It was a cool, it was a great day. It was our terms. Mm-hmm. And shut it down On the and leave them, note. leave them begging for more. Yeah. It and, was so cool. And we honed in and we focused in on what we could operate yep. to our standard and do best. And that's two labs boarding. Yeah. We're still boarding. Awesome. We're still able to service so many of our clients in the best way possible. And two labs had been around before. It's yeah. not a new thing. It's not a new no. name. Like it's just, re- we're kind of repurposing it, back. it, if yeah. you will. And you said earlier, you're not necessarily done with it all, but for now, it's what it needed to be. Yeah. And, and I think that's the best strategic decision. Yeah. And I think a, lo- I think a lot of us. people, once they talk to us, get on board with that and understand too. Yeah. So a couple of things similar in this. If you're an employee, I don't care if you're young, if you're old, if it's your first job, if, you're, if it's your 20th job. Communicate. Express your needs. Be receptive to coaching. And criticism. No one thinks it's your first job will be your last job. But if you're being coached, if you're being critiqued, there's development in that. And these are things that you should be able to take on to your next job and build upon in the professional you know, workforce. 
end well. There is no reason to blow things up. If you're at a job, any job, and you're fired on a spot, it's probably not the employer's fault. No employer benefits no. from being short a person. It's probably your fault. Just take ownership in that. If you're an employer, make sure you're super clear about what the expectations are. On the front. Of the job. On the front end. Yeah. Make sure that you are taking the time to coach and develop. All right? And communicate. And if it's a non-negotiable thing, it, that's not a coaching moment. End it if it's non-negotiable. But if it's coachable, coachable. Coach them. If it's a training issue, train better. Give the opportunities for the team to win. And if they're individuals aren't coming along, end it. Because letting it go on will never end not good for in you. It's anybody's not good for favor. Yeah. So just end it. But if you're communicating, all of these things end up well. It all ends up well. There's plenty of food out there for everybody to eat. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't have to kill somebody else so that you can eat. Someone doesn't have to lose for you to win. Just be an adult about it. But I will say, if you are going to come at somebody, you better kill them. That's the best thing to do. Don't come half. Because then you just fire them up. Just lessons learned. <laughs> you better take their head. All right, guys, this has been the Big Dog <laughs> Podcast. We'll see you soon. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows.